Hey guys, it's Julie Barrett with Conservative Ladies of Washington back again with another bill of the day. Today's bill is House Bill 1469. And this is a very dangerous, extremely concerning bill. This bill works in collaboration with another bill that we have been talking a lot about, which is Senate Bill 5599. And Senate Bill 5599 gives minor children the ability to get what are called protected health services, being abortion or gender affirming services, without parental notification already. They can do this 13 and over without parental consent, but this would actually take away uh, even being able to notify parents. And uh, what 1469 does is it defines protected health care services. And it basically sets up Washington state as a sanctuary state. So the Democrats that are sponsoring this bill are calling it creative ways to protect abortion after Roe v. Wade. So they're saying that people coming from other states or people providing services, abortion services, or gender affirming care for people who are coming from other states would be protected from any kind of uh, legal action from the state of origin. Now, where this is particularly concerning is that children of any age could come to Washington and receive these protected health care services and their parents wouldn't even know and their parents wouldn't even have grounds for any kind of legal recourse. Um, and with that non no parent notification, they wouldn't even be able to be told where their kid was, if they were safe, what was going on. So this is really concerning and especially concerning is that so many families have left states like Washington, Oregon, California that have similar laws to this in order to protect their children and to live in a state that actually recognizes parents as the primary stakeholder in their children's lives. And so this is kind of Washington uh, leaders <laughs> using a nice term, uh, the Washington leaders reaching into other states to override their state laws. And this gets very dangerous because this is going to cause a lot of friction, as you can imagine, with other states. It's going to also be very costly for Washington taxpayers when these legal battles are inevitably going to happen with other states. So um, it is a terrible bill. Uh, we do not like the fear mongering of the Democrat leaders trying to make people think that abortion in Washington is somehow uh, going to be taken away or that traveling from one state to another for an abortion is going to cause you legal action. Uh, that's just not true and we are still Americans and so if you're an adult living in Texas and you want to come to Washington and get an abortion, there's nothing that says you can't do that. The last time I checked, we could travel to another state and we didn't have to uh, let anybody know what we were doing in that state. So this is all a fear tactic it's a complete assault on parental rights. It's dangerous and harmful for children. And so today was a committee hearing in the Senate Law and Justice Committee, and there was public testimony, which was amazing. There were so many great testimonies. So I want to let you have a listen to some of these testimonies. So first up, this is my testimony. Go ahead, Julie. Good morning, Chair Dingra and members of the committee. Thank you for allowing me to speak today in opposition to House Bill 1469. For the record, my name is Julie Barrett. I'm the founder of Conservative Ladies of Washington, a resident of the 44th District, and here representing thousands of concerned citizens across the state. Since the overturn of Roe in June, there has been a lot of messaging from Washington state leaders to create a fear in people that the ability to have an abortion in this state is under attack. Abortion law has been settled by Washington voters for a very long time, and even last session, we saw expansion of those laws with the passage of House Bill 1851. Creating this shield law is not only unnecessary, but it is dangerous and will likely get in our state at taxpayer expense into trouble with legal battles with other states. However, our main concern with this bill is the definitions of protected health care services and the way this bill, bill works with other proposed legislation this session, specifically Senate Bill 5599. 
Together, these bills would allow children to come to Washington from other states without parental consent or even notification. It will be very easy for vulnerable children to be targeted and trafficked into Washington for irreversible surgeries and medication. As lawmakers, you have a duty to protect our children from harm. We don't even allow children under 18 to get tattoos with parental consent due to their permanent nature and the mental immaturity of these kids. Children under 18 do not have the mental maturity to consent to these permanent procedures. These gender transition services are very new. We do not know the long-term effects and many that we have seen are devastating. If Washington lawmakers pass laws that reach into the families of other states, I believe it is safe to say we will see a strong response from other states to protect their own citizens. Of course, this will come at great expense to the taxpayers of Washington, but the greatest expense will be the irreparable harm done to children. I implore you to stop this bill in this committee and vote no. Thank you. I was followed by Alex, who is the Washington State Chapter Leader for Gays Against Groomers. And Alex has really been amazing here in Washington State in getting involved this legislative session. She also testified against Senate Bill 5599, which I mentioned earlier, and she testified again today. She really has an important voice and perspective that's necessary for uh, this, this argument and this issue that we're facing. So here's Alex. <clears throat> Good morning. My name is Alex Krastowski. I'm here today as the Gays Against Groomers Washington State Lead. As an organization, we are appalled that the Washington State Legislature has taken such extreme and aggressive steps to override not only parental rights, but now with HB 1469, Washington is attempting to override the rights of our fellow states. When HB 1469 is combined with SB 5599, at worst, it creates the perfect conditions for child sex trafficking, and at best creates an incentive for individuals to abuse the conditions outlined in the bill to violate custody agreements or to abduct, abduct a child in the middle of a contentious divorce. Instances of this are already occurring in California, and it will happen here too. This is unacceptable, and we do not approve of this being passed in our name. The irony of this bill being coined the shield law is not lost on us. You are not shielding children. You are shielding those who would abuse them. Gender affirming care is a disgusting euphemism for child abuse. The medicalization and mutilation of children should not be protected. Now with this law, Washington is attempting to usurp the authority of other states. HB 1469 attempts in multiple ways to refuse the legal inquiries and <clears throat> subpoenas of other states. It it pertains in many ways to gender affirming care. There are several states that have banned gender affirming care for minors and more will follow. With that said, this law would violate Article 4, Section 2, Clause 2 of the US Constitution. This is the extradition clause, which states a person charged in a state with a crime that flees justice to be found in another state shall be on demand of the executive authority of the state has fled to be delivered up to. <clears throat> We do not believe or trust that Washington is going to honor its legal and moral duty when it won't even recognize that gender affirming care is pseudoscience and its implementation is child abuse. We urge you to vote no on HB 1469. Thank you. And finally is my friend Ollie London, who is a detransitioner and uh, has been really great in uh, speaking out against uh, the, the trans cult, the trans movement, and really being an advocate for protecting children. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Chair Dingra, Ranking Member Patton, and members of the Law and Justice Committee. My name is Ollie London. I'm a detransitioner, activist, and author. For the record, I am here today representing myself to testify in opposition to HB 1469 concerning gender affirming treatment on minors. This new bill will allow children from out of state and from neighboring states such as Idaho to travel to Washington to circumnavigate their own state laws in order to get hormones puberty blockers, and gender reassignment surgery. I believe this new bill will fundamentally exploit and encourage teens with significant vulnerabilities and gender dysphoria to travel to the state without their parents' knowledge or consent. Studies indicate that five out of six teens grow out of gender dysphoria in adulthood, so therefore subjecting them to gender-affirming care is both harmful and wrong. This new law overrides basic parental consent and removes fundamental parental rights and a parent's ability to protect their child and instead puts already vulnerable children in harm's way. I urge you all to vote con and oppose this harmful legislation. 
Every single one of you has a duty and moral responsibility to protect these children from medical exploitation and defend parental rights. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to go watch more testimonies from this committee hearing. I've got it spliced up for you. So you can hit that link and you can go hear from all of the testifiers that testified today. Like I said, there were a lot of people that had really compelling testimonies. And I hope that the committee will take these testimonies into account when they're making this their decision whether to pass this out of committee or not you can still take action on this bill. What you can do now is you can email the members of the Senate Law and Justice Committee and you can let them know that you do not want them to pass this bill through the committee. I've got all of those emails down in the description and you can just copy and paste those into an email. You need to do it this week as this will go for executive session next week. And we want them to get these emails before then. Another action step you can take is to join us. Become a member of Conservative Ladies of Washington. We have memberships available for men and women, and we are super thrilled that we have got so many men joining us this year. We just created our men's membership in January, and it's really great to have men on our team and taking action. We have a legislative action team that meets weekly during session and then biweekly uh, after session, and we have a lot of work to do, and we need all hands on deck. If you don't want to be a member, that's cool. Um, you can also just make a donation and contribute to the fight uh, financially. We are spending a ton of time and financial resources to be in this fight, and we can use all the help that we can get. Without your help, we can't do what we're doing. So consider making a donation or becoming a member today. And I look forward to coming back to you with another bill of the day later this week.